A few months ago, an archaeologist came here to the town of Burford in Oxfordshire. He'd been asked to look at this beautiful place, the Priory, which is built on the site of a medieval hospital. But he's a bit of a nosy bloke, so he wandered off, started poking around in the flower beds, and came up with a load of this stuff, which is actually Anglo-Saxon pottery. And then he began to hear stories of a Roman coin hoard and a sarcophagus, and he thought to himself, I've got to dig this place to see what this is all about. A bit lucky he works for us, really. Mick, do you reckon you can crack the mystery of this place in three days? Oh, I wouldn't have thought so. Don't you love his optimism? Burford in Oxfordshire is one of the finest medieval towns in England. Almost every house here is picture postcard perfect. And the granddaddy of them all is this one, the Priory. This sprawling mansion is being restored with great care because underneath it is thought to lie a medieval hospital. But that might just be the start of it. The owners called in our very own Mick Aston, who stumbled across something rather surprising in the garden. So the fact that we're here is all down to you. Yeah, I'm afraid it is, actually. I, I, I was asked to come here and look at this building and then wandered off and looked at the grounds around it, thought it was really interesting and we ought to come back and do more work. I bet you're great to employ. You were asked <laughs> to look at this fantastic place and you're poking around the back. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a medieval uh, hospital on the site, but up on the hill at the back, we found 10th century pottery. So that's Anglo-Saxon? Yeah. When you say you found it, where was it? It, it, was, it was in the vegetable patch on the top of the hill, but it's earlier than the date of the town of Burford when that's found in the 12th century. So there's something here that much earlier. And finding that was sufficiently exciting for you to come to us and say, I really want to dig it. Well, that's right, and we've already started, actually, because John came and did some geophysics <laughs> here. You mean you two set up your own mini time <laughs> team before we could arrive? And we've got some fantastic results. I mean, these are the resistance plots, and you can see in black what I think are wall lines. They actually suggest that there's walls coming out from the building underneath the lawn. Yeah. So what are you going to do now? Well, we want to expand the survey to see the whole of the lawn. Do we have to wait for John, or could we start digging here where he's already geophased? No, we can start digging here because these anomalies here seem to reflect buildings incorporated back into that building. So we should certainly have a look at those first. Yeah, but knowing you, I bet we'll be wandering off elsewhere as well. Oh yeah, we're going to go back up on the hill and see if we can find more of that pottery, certainly. So, medieval hospital or Anglo-Saxon settlement? It looks like Mick's got us looking for both in this massive garden. That's over a thousand years of history to sort out. At least our search for the hospital should be fairly straightforward. Fingers crossed, John's radar has picked up part of it under the front lawn. It means we can put in our first trench straight away. This should be a doddle, shouldn't it? Barry? Look at that, hopeless. Oh dear, the first cut is the hardest. Typical, isn't it? Mick Aston come here, he finds Saxon pottery. What do I find? White china. Oh well. Stop moaning, Phil. You've got the easy job. Our second target is the vegetable garden, and it's going to be a lot harder. This is where Mick found his mysterious Anglo-Saxon pottery, and he wants us to scour it for more. It's not exactly small, so we've called in some extra help. Hey, more people up here. But organising his class proves a little difficult for archaeologist Professor Dumbledore. So each group of three go to a tray. Just put it back right. found Oh, well, that's now. the best we'll way. Put your arms around each other. And no, then don't start, don't start tray, digging yet. Don't start treason. digging yet. You're all right. That's right, leave it. Treason. 
I see you've recruited some archaeologists to have a look for you. Yeah, this is the local primary school. We thought we'd get them to go through the garden soil, see if they can find any more pottery, see if there's a concentration that might indicate a site. How do we work out how to analyse that concentration? Well, in theory, it should be quite simple. We just count the number of sherds of each type of pottery that's come from each of the squares that the kids are digging in, plot them up on a screen or a piece of paper, and then, well, we've got a lot of pottery, then hopefully we've got a settlement. I must say they're being remarkably quiet for a bunch of primary school kids. Yeah, well, they're waiting for you to start them off. They've all got a bucket in the sieve, and they're going to fill a bucket and sieve it and see what's in the, in the sieve. So as soon as you say go, off they'll go. Right, off you go! So, are we going to find Anglo-Saxon Burford, or this being time team, will we end up with a load of mouldy old vegetables? Only one way to find out. Start digging. Welcome back to Burford in Oxfordshire, where we're trying to uncover the secrets of Burford Priory, the biggest house in town. Down here, we think we may have the first glimmerings of a medieval hospital. Why are we so sure that there are likely to be medieval remains here? Well, the archaeology doesn't just stop at the front door. Excuse the mess, this is the incident room, by the way. But look at these arches. Now, even I can tell that these are medieval, but what puzzles me is that it all seems far too grand to be a priory. Antonia, you know more about this place than anyone else. You actually wrote the book on Burford. Is this really a priory? No, it's a private house, and it has been for the best part of 500 years. So why is it called a priory? Because it stands on the site of a medieval hospital. But one's a priory and the other's a hospital. There seems to be some confusion over the name towards the late 15th, 16th century when even the records refer to the Priory or the Prior of Burford. What's our earliest reference to the hospital? Right, the earliest reference is this close roll of 1226 in which the King grants to the Hospital of St John in Burford ten cartloads of wood from the Forest of Witchwood. But in addition to the medieval stuff, which we're pretty sure is here, Mick's been getting very excited about the idea of Anglo-Saxon finds. Is it likely that we'll find anything Anglo-Saxon? Oh, I hope so. I Why? Hope so. The place named Burford is Saxon in origin, and it relates to the ford leading to or by the Burr. And what's a Burr? A Burr is a fortified enclosure, um, which would have been used in times of stress when people could use as a refuge, or it might have been inhabited. OK, so the name's a good Anglo-Saxon clue, but that's all we've got. So far, but fingers crossed. So, apart from the odd leftover arch, the big house bears almost no resemblance to the 13th century hospital. As lovely as it is, this building dates from the 1580s. Our best chance of finding the hospital lies under the front lawn. And out back, we're also going to see if we've got some kind of Anglo-Saxon settlement. The question is, which one will we find first? So does this line up with the geophysics, then? <sighs> Bit early to say yet, actually, Ray reckon Matt. Let's just take... Phil thinks he's made a good start. He's found stone. And look at that, you see, look, those do fake. They've got a bit of a face to them there, yeah? But he's being given a run for his money. Because in the vegetable garden, our junior archaeologists are coming up trumps. This is part of a medieval jug. Uh, so that probably dates to about 1,200 or thereabouts. So that's about, what, 800 years old? So that's like the oldest piece of pottery anyone's found. Come on, Phil. That's another one on yeah. the same, same alignment, look. So that's three. That dates to about the time of William the Conqueror. So that's really, 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 really old. So that's great. I mean, that's fantastic. I mean, you've been doing this for about 10 minutes, have you? Something like that? <laughs> Got another one. Four. <laughs> In a line. <laughs> so, young time team 47, professional archaeologists four. Phil's in danger of being out dug by a bunch of nine-year-olds. Our young diggers have now found so much late Saxon pottery that we can plot it all on a map. We're going to put in a trench where there's a hot spot. So we say cheerio to one team. Bye. 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 And say hello to another. 
So that's both digs off to a good start. But the sheer size of the Priory Garden is a challenge in itself. It's one of the biggest we've ever dug on Time Team. It's got rows of topiary, Victorian flower beds, even a 17th century chapel. And that's the problem. It's so big we could find anything here. And I'm going to have a little chat with Mick because I'm worried we're just digging holes willy-nilly. In other words, do we have a plan? Mick, alarm bells are ringing in my mind. If we were looking for the medieval hospital, fine. If we were looking for a Saxon burr, fingers crossed, maybe we would yeah. find it. But this seems to me to be much more scattergun. Surely what we ought to be doing in archaeology is either proving something or disproving it. Uh, it, well, yes, you could look at it like that, but it's actually more of an evaluation of what is a very big garden. You see, the part of the problem, I think, is that with a lot of archaeological work, we dig because we know or we think there's something there of a certain date. There's actually stuff all over the place. Yes, but will we get a story? I think it's worth seeing how many periods of occupation we've got represented here. So, you know, I'd like to try this with what is, after all, a big garden. I mean, it's almost, it's a bigger version of thousands of gardens. That's stretching it a bit, Mick. This place is huge. We've got half a dozen trenches open in the vegetable garden alone. And we're getting a lot more pottery, most of it late Saxon, early Norman. Oh, marvellous, look at this. The ten. The ten. There's a clear cut-off date around 1100. But we still don't know where the pottery's coming from, so we've got to keep digging. Over on the front lawn, Phil's row of stones has turned into the corner of a large wall, which lines up perfectly with the geophys. Could this be our medieval hospital? Well, some 13th century hospitals could be very big, but most had two main buildings, a long infirmary hall for the sick and a chapel, either on the end or on the side. So which one does Phil have? You can't tell whether you're outside or inside there, can you? Oh, surely I must be inside. I mean, that's got to be an outside wall or at least part of an outside wall and then turn round and go in round there. I'm sure that must be outside and I'm on the inside. And just to prove Phil doesn't make this stuff up, look at this lovely floor tile. It must mean we're inside a building. This is exactly the sort of thing you'd expect to find in a very posh 13th, yes. 14th century yes, building. Yes, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Like a chapel. Yes, yeah. yes. So this could be one of our hospital buildings, the chapel. And the second, the hall, might be closer than we think. Come here and have a look at these. These scenes here, Richard, <clears throat> are they the sort of thing that I should be finding in my trench? You should be. These genuine medieval late 13th century. You see, the thing of it is that the, what we think is the outside wall of the building in my trench lines up over there. It doesn't line up through here. Does that mean to say these are not in their original position? They've been moved? Yes, wow. and they've been reduced in height because during the restoration in 1908 by Colonel Sal de la Terriere, he discovered this portion of arcade in that wall. And I can show you where it is. So if you look, if you imagine those two arches, although they're reduced in size, came out of this section of the wall. So we would have a, a, a row of arches just like that, literally coming right the way back down through here. Yeah, all the way through. So if Phil's right, then we might have an aisle with an arcade running under the house. That would tie in quite nicely with the idea of a chapel at the end of an infirmary hall. So, pretty impressive work by Phil. But then Mick just has to go one better. Anything, Paul? Oh, yes, are we? Um, funny enough, there was very little in the soil as we got down. Yeah. As we were going down through it. Then once we got near the bottom there, and where Faye was trowelling, there's what looks like a linear feature, and that came out of it. Now, that's the Cotswolds work, but that's the early stuff. That's pre-conquest. That's late 10th oh, or 11th right. century. Right. And it's actually right. sticking out of a feature. We've got features in this trench. 
Are we talking buildings or settlements or well, something like that? Well, I think it's a building. I mean, as a bonus, we got this out as well, which is a large lump of daub, which has been burnt. So possibly off a Watland daub a building Watland or an oven. Watland daub or an oven or something yeah. like that. And a pig tooth as well. Oh, so <laughs> it's starting to look like domestic refuse. Well, it really fair. is. That's very good, isn't it? Yeah. Crikey. There's possibly a couple of post holes down there. It's still being cleaned up. Um, Faye's going to get it all sorted out, hopefully, in the near future. This is fantastic news. Whisper it carefully, but this could be the first hint of an Anglo-Saxon house. And I can count on one hand the number of those we've ever found on Time Team. Yeah. 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 Oh, what? <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, that's so a big lump of metalworking slag. So we've got metal possible slag, timber building. Metalworking slag. Possible piece of an oven dome, yeah. timber building. Timber building, pottery, Ooh, domestic food waste with the pig bone. It's only going to get better, isn't it? Let's hope so. It's only going to get better. And with two medieval buildings and now a Saxon one, it's a cracking end to our first day. At the back of the house, Mick's been going all Anglo-Saxon on us and has come up with this piece of pottery, which dates to around 450 AD. That's just after the Romans left and about 800 years older than that wall. So look at that. Could we be about to find the Anglo-Saxon origins of Burford? We'll find out tomorrow. Beginning of day two here at Burford in Oxfordshire, where we're at this fabulous house called the Priory. And over there behind that topiary, Phil's got some really intriguing Middle Ages archaeology. He thinks we may have the medieval hospital. But on the other hand, if you look behind this door here after you, I do love this place. It's full of these tiny little nooks and crannies. If you look through here, we've got the vegetable garden where there's completely different archaeology. And over here, having a little rest of the flower pot, man. No, no, we're not having a rest. <laughs> we're waiting for you. <laughs> what kind of archaeology have we actually got here, Mick? We've got a lot of Anglo-Saxon pottery from about 450, the end of the Roman period, right up to about 1100. And is it generally spread all over the vegetable garden? There is a spread all over this vegetable patch here, but it's denser up the top end where that group are digging over there, and it's getting denser as we go up the slope. And is that enough of a clue for you to be able to say, I reckon there was a Saxon house or even a Saxon settlement here? Yeah, I think we're looking at a Saxon settlement. On this little knoll, actually, we're seeing a sort of halo of of pottery debris around it. That's probably what we're looking at. Well, it's great that we can all pat ourselves on the back. You've got fabulous medieval archaeology in the front garden. He's got his Anglo-Saxon stuff. But is this two separate archaeological digs, or is there going to be a way that we can tie them together? I think we are already beginning to pull yeah. the story together, Tony. I mean, you see, Mick has got this well, it looks like he's got a settlement here ending what, 1100? Something like that, yeah. And you see, down there, we've got, we've, got, we've got our hospital building, which, as far as we can see at the moment, is probably, what, in the 12th century, 13th century? 12th century, so, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. But we're beginning to get hints that we could have an actual earlier building yeah. on the site. It's closing the gap to that 1100 gap and it will bring the site here and that site there it will just bring them together into yep. one complete site so at the moment there's a break in our timeline today we need to close the chronological gap between our saxon village which ends in 1100 and our hospital which pops up in the records over a hundred years later But medieval historian John Blair suspects our hospital may be a lot older than the history books let on. That arcade in there, yeah. now those mouldings, they look late 13th century to me. They look about 1280, 1300 yeah. maybe. Yeah. But then you look at these buttresses. I mean, if these are buttresses, these are very broad, shallow buttresses. They look re really Romanesque. What to me is like Norman, yeah, the, the, yeah. Rounded, the lovely rounded arch. That's right. They look to me maybe 12th century or perhaps first half of the 13th, but not as late as that arcade. So that makes me wonder if we might have two phases in this building. If John's right, our hospital could start just 50 years after the Saxon village ended. And instead of the two buildings, we could have just one. An early Norman chapel with a later arcade added on. So, great theory, guys. We just need to find one arcade. 
So 67 from here, two meters so it's from two that. metres from there. Up until a few minutes ago, I thought this archaeology here was part of the 13th century hospital, which we know exists because of the history books. But now they've started looking at it closer, some of the archaeologists are starting to think that this stuff is older, older than anything we know about here. Maybe it's part of an earlier phase of the hospital which stretched back in this direction. And the only way to find out whether that hypothesis is true or not is to put in a big hole here, which is why Phil and John are doing this measuring, which is fine, that's their job as archaeologists, except look at this place. Never mind the tulips, that is a listed building. It's a grade one listed building. You can't just slap in any old hole, what, one and a half metres from the foundations, although they seem perfectly happy about it. I think Shall somebody... I Hey, hang on a minute, I'm talking to the camera. Well, yeah, I know you are, but we're putting in a trench. You're putting in a trench right by a Grade 1 listed building. Yeah, have you got permission to do that? Yeah. You, you haven't, that is yes, not true. You, no, yeah, you have, have no permission to do yes, that Yes, we yet. have. He hasn't. Someone's yes, going to have, have to make some phone calls. Yes, we Don't have. Don't say, yes, we have, yes, we have. It's you childish. See? Yes, yeah, we yeah. have. <laughs> Since the filming of this programme, Phil's asked me to tell you that, yes, he had. Or so he says. Over in the vegetable garden, which I hasten to add isn't Grade 1 listed, Faye's got a rare foundation trench for a timber Saxon house. It was definitely gone by 1100, but when was it built? It's hard to tell. The pottery from it could be as early as 450 AD, and we're also getting Roman stuff as well. To you and I, a bit of pot is a bit of pot, but to expert Paul Blinkhorn, this stuff is key to dating our site. Now, I know that's St Neot's work, cos you told me that. <laughs> it's true. What period's that? Well, it's the typical sort of early late Saxon pottery we get in this part of the world. I mean, it starts about uh, 900, possibly even as early as 850. And again, this is a bowl, but um, it's different to the Cotswolds were. So, we're talking about this? About that sort of size, yeah. yeah. You do t sometimes find them with sockets on the side, like spouts, but we think they were actually for putting wooden handles in, so you could use them as a frying pan. It's not nearly as sophisticated, this stuff, as the stuff which preceded it, the Roman work. Yeah, I mean, the, the Roman pottery production was generally a lot more organised and sophisticated than, than the Saxons. They had full-time potters throwing stuff on wheels, firing it in big kills, really, really churning the stuff out. The commonest form of early Saxon pottery's got animal dung mixed in with it. Animal dung? Yes. Why did they use that? You mix it in with the, the clay, you fire the pot, all the organic material burns out, and you're left with quite a corky pot. It means, even though it's quite crudely made, when you put it on the fire, it'll expand and contract without cracking, so it's, it's a functional thing. Unless they liked animal dung in their pottery, I don't know. <laughs> well, slightly more information than I wanted. But how on earth did they first discover that animal dung is good for making pottery? Lucky for us that someone did, because we're now starting to find this so-called Anglo-Saxon poo pottery out front as well. It's coming from this dark layer of earth that Matt's digging, under the hospital floor. It's really quite tight date-wise. We've got lots of the, um, the Cotswolds were, the sort of Saxo-Norman stuff that we're getting in the garden. But you've got a couple of other bits of stuff, uh, Kennet Valley were, that doesn't come in until about 1050. So, I mean, looking at this, this feature, whatever it is, dates to about 1050, 1100. Right. Really tight. So it's got to be earlier than this, all these stone walls that are cut through it. Mm. So it looks like we've got an early Norman hospital Good sitting thing. right on top of Saxon demolition material. Phil can now quite clearly see two Norman building phases. He hasn't found the arcade or any of its arches yet, but he has found the edge of the 13th century extension. Now we have got that wall yep. coming through there and then turning and coming back on itself there. Everything we're finding points to something significant taking place around the year 1100. Mick's starting to get very excited. So excited that he's disappeared off into town. Phone! Come in and off. OK. Mick! Oh, you're there, are you? I thought you'd take longer than that. Come along <laughs> there, look. Well, you better have a good reason for dragging me up here. No, I have. I have. Because you can see the whole town from here, look. 
Cool. That's look something. across there, look, there's our hospital, the Priory site, look. From here, you can really clearly see how there's quite a substantial hill behind it, can't you? Yeah, where the trees are at the back is where the Saxon pottery's coming from. But then in front of us, you've got all this medieval new town laid out. Uh, you know, you come over the, the ford, over the river Windrush down there, and then you've got the main street up the middle, and you've got all these carefully laid out properties running back from that. When would the new town have been built? Well, this one's about 1100, uh, which is quite early, because there are literally hundreds of them founded in the 1100s and 1200s. Everybody's at it, because you can make money out of building a new town. Wouldn't it make sense for our hospital to respect the high street, though? It's, it's set a long way back from it. Yeah, well, that's fairly typical. You don't want to, if you like, use your valuable properties on the main street, but you want the, the hospital nearby. So it's, it's quite normal to have it sort of just tucked the back of the town like that. OK, that deals with our medieval archaeology, but we've got a lot of earlier stuff too. Yeah, uh, and, and I think I'm beginning to think that what we, what's actually happening is that's the earlier settlement. It's probably one of a number of the villages down this valley. And then the town is built and people move from there into the town. That would make sense with what we, what we see. So we're beginning to see the big picture. It looks like the creation of the new town killed off our Saxon village. But did anything else survive beyond our garden? Stuart, our landscape investigator, is taking a nose around the town to find out. It's now mid-afternoon. Faye's uncovered most of her Saxon house and she's also narrowing down its date. Well, it's Cotswolds again, but it's really crude. So Cotswolds, that's the Anglo-Saxon stuff? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's really unusually thick and heavy. Um, we get stuff like this in the Midlands that's Middle Saxon, but not in this fabric. I've never seen anything quite like this before from this part of the world, and I've seen an awful lot of pottery from this part of the world. Well, that's good, we've got a first for you. <laughs> Well, it's either a jug handle or it's a rim of a really simple, crude, upright pot, the sort of thing you get in the Middle Saxon period. OK, and that, what date would that, that be? That would be 650 to 850. I mean, that's perfect, because that actually that dates then our beam slot. So right. we've got a Middle Saxon building. Oh, so this is from the beam slot? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting, because, I mean, if you look at Middle Saxon buildings in places like East Anglia, they're, they're, they're really quite vague structures. What you basically get is a couple of very faint, shallow beam slots where there's been wooden beams set in the ground and then upright timbers jointed into them, and then the whole superstructure built around that, and all they basically leave is two very faint sort of gullies. Which in is the just what we've which is got. What you've got, yeah. So it looks like our timeline is really clear. Our site starts off as a mid to late Saxon settlement, which disappears when the town's built in 1107 and is followed by the early Norman hospital. And then, a trench which so far we've overlooked suddenly pushes our story even earlier. Apparently, we've got a surprising development here in the vegetable garden. Scarlett, what have you got in your trench? A Roman wall. You're kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not. This one here that we thought was medieval? Yep, definitely. How do you know that that is Roman? Well, first of all, it's on a completely different alignment to anything else that we've had. Um, and secondly, it's just really, really well built. Look at this lovely ashlar block here in the corner. It's absolutely beautiful. And the third thing is the clincher is the pottery. What about the pottery pool? Well, I mean, you've got this Victorian water pipe cut through the wall, and the only pottery you've got is either Victorian or Roman. So it's got to be a Roman wall. There's no medieval pottery around at all. If you look at the medieval buildings in the other trench, there's medieval pottery all over it. There isn't a single scrap from this trench. What's the Roman stuff? Um, it's just a couple of sherds, but probably first or second century, I think. So what do you think this building is? Ooh, a big stone one. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> the wall is a real mystery. And it's got us really excited because we've heard rumours of other Roman stuff. We've sent John Blair to check out a supposed Roman sarcophagus in the churchyard. And there's also talk of a Roman coin hoard being found here in the 19th century. 
And then things start to get a little mysterious out front too. Our hospital seems to have a bit of a weird shape. New Geophys suggests that it's only got one side aisle when we would have expected it to have two. And try as he might, Phil can't find any more arches for the one we found. It's almost as if this big house is determined to cling on to its secrets for a little longer. Ever get the feeling someone knows more than you do? I've been wandering around the gardens and walls around here. Looking, looking. Stuart's search around the town has led him right back to the garden. And he thinks he's identified the heart of our Saxon settlement, the original road along which it grew up. He reckons this back street here once carried on to the river. Today there's a 17th century chapel in the way, but there's a clue in the south wall. What is interesting is the uh, geophysics, the radar that was, was done in here. There's a chapel there. And you see that line coming through oh, underneath right. the, yeah. the floor there? Well, if you look down on the outside of the building, look what's sticking out there. Ah, right. To a, an ignoramus like me, it looks as if the chapel sits on top of that, that masonry. It, what do you think about it? Looking at it, it does. I mean, Obviously, a bit of measurement like that doesn't match the rest of the wall. Mm. It's, so, a, it's pretty shoddy, isn't it? It's pretty shoddy, but if it was there originally and they were building a chapel on top of it, it wouldn't matter because it would be below the ground level. Right. Stewart's noticed that this block of stone continues the line of the old road. He doesn't think it's actually the Saxon road itself, but he does think it might be the boundary wall of the medieval hospital which was built on top of it. The only way to prove it is to dig inside the chapel. But that's going to have to wait until tomorrow, because the rest of us need a well-earned drink. <laughs> Something really weird has started happening. Earlier this afternoon, all our archaeologists were getting really excited about what they'd found. They were going, oh, we've got two phases of medieval archaeology over here. Uh, over here, there's this massive Anglo-Saxon site. Even we've got this vast Roman wall. And yet, in the past five minutes or so, and it's probably something to do with the fact that we've all been drinking this stuff, those same archaeologists have been tiptoeing up to me and saying, actually, we're not really quite so sure that we've got what we thought we had, which is crazy. We came here to solve the mysteries of this house. I now feel as though we've come no further forward than we were when we started. And in addition to that, they've all started getting really intrigued by this place, the chapel, which they hadn't even looked at until late this afternoon. They're quite mad. It's going to be a lot of work tomorrow. Beginning of day three, and things are quiet here at Burford Priory. Too quiet. Two days ago, Mick promised me that he'd be able to tell the story of this place before we go home. But this big garden keeps throwing up more questions than we can answer. Yesterday afternoon, our archaeologists were really excited. They'd found this beautiful medieval hospital here. Just a few questions about its shape. Was it narrow or was it much fatter with two side aisles? In order to sort that out, they put in this highly controversial trench here, very close to the side of the house, and it proved absolutely inconclusive. This stonework here is just some garden feature or something, so that was a total waste of time. So have we got the two side aisles? Well, this appears to be one of them. It goes along here like that and then turns like that. This stuff in the middle here, that's just rubble. What about the other side aisle? Well, that ought to be where this light blue plastic is. But according to John's geophys, there doesn't seem to be anything there at all. So, Mick, have we got a wonky chapel with one side aisle? Well, we might have. I mean, it might just have a north aisle. But we think we ought to look where the plastic is. Even though there's nothing on the geophysics, there might still be a robber trench that shows us that there was an aisle butted onto the chapel at that point. Show me the nothing. <laughs> <laughs> there's the corner of the chapel. Yeah. And there is nothing. So has it been robbed out? Did it ever exist? So that's where we want to look. So, with one day left, we're quite literally digging for all or nothing. And it isn't just Phil who's going for broke. 
we've got to tie our hospital in the front to the Saxon village out back. So we're taking a leap of faith by opening a final trench inside the present day chapel. Under the altar lies a strange block of stone. The more romantic of us think it could be a tomb. But Stuart suspects it might be the boundary wall of the medieval hospital, which follows the line of the old Saxon road. So that's the front, but what about the Roman wall in the back? We've now got a Roman coin from the same trench, but is everything what it seems? So it's a Roman coin, but it's got two loops for yeah. fastening over a strap. That's right, a strap. That's very interesting because it's a very common early Anglo-Saxon practice to salvage Roman coins and mount them up as jewellery. So it supports the impression we're getting of an early Anglo-Saxon settlement here. So are we looking at the Roman stuff the wrong way round, or are we just plain wrong? I hear that the, uh, the story here has changed yet again. It has, but it's not Roman. It's not Roman? <laughs> no. So you're absolutely right, but also absolutely wrong. I'm afraid so, yeah. Why are you so sure it isn't Roman now, where yesterday you were convinced it was? Well, we've got this pit here that is Saxo-Norman. Oh, I see. So uh, this can't be Roman because the Saxons came after the Romans, so you couldn't have a Roman wall on top of a Saxon yeah. pit. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Anything else? And also, we've got this ironstone here yeah. um, that wasn't used as a building material to the late 1600s. Well, that seems so... fairly <laughs> conclusive, doesn't it? Paul! Paul Blinkhorn, world-famous authority on pop. <laughs> it was Roman yesterday, this wall. It was indeed Roman yesterday, but it's not anymore. Have you any idea what this structure was? I haven't got the faintest idea, I'm afraid. It's a really, really big wall, but I have no idea what it's for. So we were just plain wrong after all. But as we close the trench down, we realise it's forcing us to wonder about a few other supposed Roman finds. At the beginning of the programme, I said a Roman sarcophagus had been found here. Well, our experts have looked at it, and it's not Roman at all. It's just a bog-standard cattle trough. And in addition to that, I thought that we'd got a hoard of Roman coins. Well, it turns out that that was just a myth. There were, in fact, just two Roman coins. But it's weird, isn't it, Paul? Because although we've lost all these big, dramatic Roman things, there is Roman activity here. We found it in the grounds. Well, I mean, there's Roman pottery all over the site. There's a little background scatter of it. This hole down here is absolutely typical. We've got six shards of pottery come out of it. Four of them are Roman, one's early Saxon and one's late Saxon. So does that mean that we're wrong in thinking of Burford as essentially Saxon and that it could have been a big Roman settlement originally? I don't think so. I mean, looking at the stuff that's come out of here, it all seems to be first, second century. There's no evidence of continuity into the Saxon period. So it could just be that there was a little Roman farmstead here at some time? Yeah, I think that's exactly it. There's obviously some sort of small-scale Roman settlement and we're just kind of seeing the fallout from it, I suppose, across the site. But no sarcophagus, no hoard, no big Roman wall. Well, we all make mistakes, but we can't afford any more because time is running out. So we've once again asked the local primary school next door for help. The children are making us a model of Burford, and in return, Mick's agreed to tell them the story of the town. But will he be able to pull it all together in time? Well, at least we now know that our story begins with the Saxons in the area of the back garden. So, are you still happy you've got an Anglo-Saxon house? Definitely, without a shadow. And do we know the date? Yeah, um, there's a few more rather scruffy bits of pottery coming out of the beam slots, but I don't see any reason to sort of change the date in from yesterday. Which is what? Middle Saxon. Date? A 650 to 850. Can you show me your house? I am, if you follow me. We're now in the entrance of the house. Yep. And so what we've got down here is a beam slot. So that's one wall there. That's one wall. Fay, 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 Fay. What's this thing here? This is a pit. It's had pottery, it had bone in, and probably from when they constructed the building, they put a load of stuff in. All right. So if we walk this way, yeah. we've got another pit here, which is actually where I got a load of animal bone. And this could possibly be like the hearth area where they had their final meal before they scarpered. Yeah. And then if we keep walking down this way, to here, this is the end of our house. It's pretty small, isn't it? It is, but it's cosy. Our Saxon house is a little gem. We hardly ever find timber buildings as old as this one. 
The small village it belonged to was founded sometime after 650 AD, before vanishing around 1100. Stuart's looking for the line of the old Saxon road. He thinks it may have become the boundary for the medieval hospital. And a little bit of stone under the present chapel may just prove he's right. All afternoon, Matt's been beavering away in this little hole. I think it's the first time ever on Time Team that we've excavated an altar of a chapel. <laughs> Stuart, why have we done it? Well, on the outside of here, there's a stub of a wall sticking out, and this chapel is clearly built over it. Did it come through, and was it anything to do with the medieval hospital? Richard, there's certainly something there, isn't there? Yeah, it's not quite as clear as I thought it would be, but it's certainly there, it's certainly pre-chapel, it's in line with the chapel, and all the sequences and maps getting out of there are very similar to the big trench Phil had in front of the house. So I think we can say that boundary wall probably came through here. So it looks like this wall marks the original road leading to the river crossing. When the medieval town was founded, a new road was built, the one that exists today. The Saxon one disappeared along with the village, and it became the hospital's eastern boundary. We know that the hospital had an impressive early Norman chapel, but we're still not entirely sure what it looked like in its later years. Phil spent the morning trying to find out if it had a second arcade. Now, if there is a South Oil wall, if you come here, look, there's the line of the wall on the north side. Yeah. It should come straight through here. It should be hitting it here, yeah. And if it's here, we should see it in the side of that modern soakaway. Mm. What do you see in the side of that soakaway? It's absolutely nothing in there. Natural clay. Yeah. Where's the wall? That's not there, is it? Exactly. <laughs> The empty trench means a second arcade was never built. And at last, Phil can say exactly what this building looked like. Funnily enough, I think John was right when he said to me the other day about there being two phases, because that's what we've got. We've actually got the northeast corner of the chapel. And where this hole here is just about ties in with where the altar would have been. Oh, yeah. So we've got this yeah. massive thick wall coming through here with quite slender buttresses on that corner and on that corner. And then the wall comes through here. It's a sort of basically an oblong chapel yeah. that is shooting straight through the house there. Yeah. And then at a level later phase, what they've done is they've added on this oil through here. And of course, that belongs to the phase with the arcade in it. And we've been looking to see whether there's a south arcade and a south oil. Right. And all we've managed to find is the rubber trench for the, the wall that goes with this one. In other words, the early phase of the chapel. Yeah. So there is no south oil. It's possible our hospital chapel doubled up as an infirmary hall. But without a second aisle, it must have seemed a rather cramped and odd-shaped building. And we think we might have found the reason why. I've come across a reference in the Victoria County history to a record held by the Bishops of Lincoln, in which in 1305, the Bishop granted an indulgence to all those who gave aid to the fabric of the Church of the Hospital of Burford. What's an indulgence? It's basically a payment that you could make in order to buy your way out of purgatory or hell a bit more quickly. It's a naughty tax, isn't yes, it? Yes, basically. So what do you think happened? Well, I think it's possible that, that they may have started work on the hospital and run out of money and gone to the bishop and said, we're a bit strapped for cash, can you help us out? And he decided that he'd grant an indulgence, which would raise some money and that they could have the proceeds from that. But despite offering a get out of hell free card, the hospital failed to raise enough cash for a second wing. It's a sad decline, but perhaps there weren't enough sick to look after. Or perhaps no one in Burford was very naughty. So there's just one question left. With all the pieces of the jigsaw in place, can Mick make good on his promise and tell the story of Burford? And we've brought back some of his fiercest critics to judge him. Tough crowd. Take it away, Mr Storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> so you know where your school is, you know where the river is, 
You know where the main road is up the middle of the town? OK? First bit of the story we can't put on here. You found Roman pottery. We don't know where the Roman site is. The bit you also found was lots of Saxon pottery. And we now think there's a Saxon settlement, Saxon village somewhere here. My lovely assistant, <laughs> Stuart, Debbie McGee of the archaeological world, will put on a little Saxon there's building, Saxons. right? And that lasts from about 400 AD right through to about 1100 AD. And then sometime after 1100, they build the new town down the main street. That's where your houses come in. So take the Saxon village away, because everybody's moved into the town, right? The village goes away. And then all down the main street, build the houses. Put your there. Leave a gap here. Yeah. Yeah. Pass them up, there we go. There we go. Do the other end like that, look. Yeah. Here we are, mate. Well, they, 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 they can put them on there, look. The ones at the back couldn't reach. I can only, right. I can only reach so far. There we go. More houses, mate. Oh, it's filling up with new people, this town, isn't it? All over, isn't it? Oh, the chimney's falling off. <laughs> Once the town is built, the hospital, which is on this site, where the poor people and the sick people were looked after, was built next to your school. And that then went on right the way through to about the time of the Tudors, when that was taken down and on the site was built the beginnings of this big house here. Yeah. So there it is. And that's more or less as it is today, isn't it? Big house at the Priory, the parish church and the town all laid out along the street. So we've just looked at over a thousand years of history. <laughs> Burford's got talent. <laughs> I think are splendid houses. You've done very well there. That's really good. Our story of Burford isn't unique. A similar one could be told in any number of towns across the country. Ours started with just a few bits of pottery in this garden and a lot of luck. And just think, we'd never have known any of this if one archaeologist hadn't got just that little bit nosy.